fellow artists, my name is Lauren, I'm the artist behind Potato Art Studios, and in today's video I'll be talking about my second art supply haul from Jackson's Art Supplies and my thoughts about it. So if you're interested in hearing about what I hauled and what I think about the company after my second order, just keep on watching. As always, there will be timestamps down below if you'd like to skip ahead to a specific section. So with my relationship with Jackson's, I had placed my first order with them in early September and I had done a YouTube video documenting the unboxing and my experience with them. So I'll leave a link to that video in the upper right hand corner and also down below in the description box. But to summarize that order, I had made a purchase for a specific type of pastel paper that uh, tends to be pretty pricey in the US. They had a sale going on, so the price on Jackson's was very, very good. So I placed an order for several pads of paper and several packs. And I had minor damage to one of the packs of paper, but it was not significant enough to go through the process of returning and getting a refund or an exchange. But with that, the end of that video, I had mentioned that I would be contacting customer service. So I did, and they were got back to me within a couple days. So I gave them all the details and pictures and also linked them I had made with the unboxing for them to look at and so they were very professional so I was very impressed with how they were able to handle my concerns and they took my recommendations very seriously to package their future orders better. In late September there was an ongoing sale with a specific brand called Sennelier. I had previously purchased a set of their soft pastels several months ago and I was very impressed with the quality of their soft pastels. So I was looking into potentially putting a order in for another set of pastels. If you're not on Jackson's mailing list, you can sign up really easily and they will send you emails periodically telling you about their latest sale. So here on the screen, I had done a bit of research and made a list in Excel of all of the prices I could find from the major art supply retailers in the United States. And I then compared it to the prices I found on Jackson's website. So the first thing I want to point out is the difference in the retail prices. So the first column that you see is the U.S. manufacturer's suggested retail price, which is MSRP. For this particular set that I was looking at, which was the 40 count soft pastel portrait half stick set, it was about 117 US dollars. When I looked on Jackson's website, their recommended retail price, which is abbreviated slightly differently as RRP, was $68.74. So this immediately kind of flagged my interest because there is a very large difference in the retail prices between the US and the UK. I'm thinking that there is probably something to do with import fees, maybe customs or taxes that make it much more expensive in the US rather than the UK. When I was looking into some other standard art supplies like colored pencils and pencils, the prices between uh, Jackson's website and a lot of the US websites were very comparable. I would say not more than 10 or 15% of a price difference. But for this specific item I was looking at, you can see that it's almost double the price retail price for the US compared to the UK. The next four columns are the major US art supply retailers and their everyday low price. So typically for online websites with your standard art supplies, there's usually not an applicable sale. Um, their 
price they advertise is their lowest price and you typically cannot apply any additional coupons or sale or discount codes to them. So what you see that I have listed on the table is basically their lowest price that they're offering. The four websites I was looking at were Blick, Jerry's, Dakota, and Cheap Joe's. And I'll have these retailers also listed in the description if you'd like to check them out. But traditionally, Blick and Jerry's are typically on the lower end, and Dakota tends to be a little bit higher, but not by much. With this specific item, Blick ended up being the cheapest at $64.32, and Dakota was the highest at $74.95. So you can see that the MSRP is not even close to the online retailer's when I went to Jackson's website, their everyday price on this set was $46.52, which is $20 less than Blick. And when they had this ongoing sale in September, that dropped the price to $37.76. So if we're doing some math and you're comparing prices, if I'm looking at the sale price at Jackson's, their sale price is 67% less than the US MSRP, and it's 40% less than the lowest US price I could find, which was at Blick. For comparing Jackson's everyday price on this set, Jackson's everyday price is 60% than the US MSRP, and it's 27% less than at Blick. So, Jackson's everyday price still beats out any of the U.S. retailers I was looking at and their sale made it even better. So I was saving even more money when they had this ongoing sale. When I was planning on making my purchase, the pastels were of course a great deal and I also added on several other items. So I'll show you my invoice here. And so I have the pastels and also three different silicone blending tools. With the price of the pastel set and these blending tools, the total came out to $55.21, and that is still about $10 cheaper than the lowest price I could find at Blick. So when we're comparing the timeline of my order, on September 23rd, I placed an order and that was on a Sunday. The order was packaged on the 25th, two days later. And the next day, the parcel left the shipping or sorting hub. Seven days later, the item arrived in the US and two days after that, it cleared customs and arrived at my door. So the total amount of time from when I placed my order to the package arriving at my doorstep was a grand total of 12 days, so about a week and a half. And that's very, very reasonable. I have personally shipped artwork overseas and it had taken anywhere from two to four weeks to arrive. So when I place an international order, I expect timeline of maybe two to three weeks, depending on customs. But comparing it to my first art supply order that I had placed with Jackson's, I'll have that up on the screen and scale it so you can see the difference. The main difference was the shipping time from when it left the shipping facility to when it arrived in the US. So with my first order, it only took four days. With my second order, it took seven days. And there is an additional day for processing for my second art supply order. But the amount of time it took for customs processing and the final leg of it being delivered to my door was still two days. So my first art supply order took a total of eight days. My second art supply order took 12 days, but both are very reasonable and uh, not abnormal. They're still very much below the average amount of time I would expect for an international order. So now I'll be showing you my unboxing. Um, I've sped up a couple parts that are a little bit boring where I'm unwrapping. Um, but this package was 
packaged very similarly to my first order. It's wrapped in a bubble mailer. Two of the blending tools were in their original packaging and one was wrapped with bubble wrap. The first item is the double-ended pastel blender and this is a pretty firm rubber blender. One has a chisel tip and one has a tapered tip. Um, this was recommended from Jason Morgan and I'll leave a link to his video where he demonstrates several different pastel blenders. The second blender I ordered was a set from ProArt and it was in a pack of five. So that first blender I ordered was $2.74 and this pack of five was $8.78. This set comes with several different shapes. The white tip is a lot softer than the red tip. The third blender I ordered, it was specially packaged for some reason. But this one is a brand called Color Shapers and it is the gray firm tip in size two. So this is quite a bit smaller than the previous two blenders. And the last item is my pastel set. So the outer packaging was wrapped with the cardboard and the inside was wrapped in bubble wrap. And so I knew prior to ordering, because I had purchased one earlier, that the pastels are fairly securely packaged. There is an outer thin cardboard box I removed that cellophane. Inside there is a sturdier corrugated cardboard box and foam inserts. After removing the top layer, there is a pamphlet, a small sheet of pastel card, and a sheet of foam. And so looking at the pastel sticks, it looks like everything is good. Nothing is broken or shattered. There's no excessive pastel dust anywhere. And so I'm very happy with how my order was received. Nothing was damaged. And here's just a layout of all the items I ordered. So I would say if you are an artist planning on investing money in art supplies, definitely do your homework and do some comparison shopping. Don't limit yourself to just buying within your own country. You can definitely buy some internationally and depending on how much your shipping is and if there's sales going on, it actually might be worth your time to place an international order and maybe do a little bit more waiting, but it's worth it if you save a lot of money. So I hope you found this video useful. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Let me know what your favorite online retailer is. I would love to hear from you. I'm always looking to save money on art supplies. So if you have a favorite online retailer, definitely link it down below and I'll check them out. If you'd like to see more art supply hauls from me, comment below and let me know. If you're not subscribed and you're interested in seeing more art videos from me, please subscribe. I plan on using these soft pastels in a lot of pastel drawing time lapses. And thank you very much for watching. I will see you in my next video.